Hi, we're here for another episode of Dinner at Your House. I'm Sunana. And I'm Jeff. We are here in the beautiful, unique home of Rosie and Ben. We're in Boulder County, and this is Humphrey. We're going to be fixing a beautiful meal of sag paneer, tandoori chicken, homemade samosas with basmati rice, and served with naan and chutneys. Thank you for having us, you guys. We really appreciate it. I've never been in such a beautiful house before. Thank you. Welcome. No worries. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having us. We're also going to be joined with some phenomenal musicians that are going to be playing with us uh, and having dinner with us in a little while. Today at dinner at Rosie's house, we're going to be making sag paneer, tandoori chicken, samosas as an appetizer with mint chutney and tamarind chutney, basmati rice, and naan. So one of our main features of today's dinner is going to be sag paneer. Sag paneer is a very traditional Indian dish. You'll find it in most Indian restaurants. But the sag paneer that we're going to make is quite unique. Um, I try to avoid using a ton of butter. Usually sag paneer in India has a load of butter in it because it's made in the winter to be very hearty so that people have enough energy to get throughout the day. But in this sag paneer, we're not using that much butter, just about a half a stick in portions for about 10 people. And then the difference between sag paneer and palak paneer, which a lot of people think are one and the same, is that sag paneer is a combination of greens. You can have spinach, mustard greens. Um, I like to put broccoli in it. So the sag paneer we're gonna be making today is a combination of broccoli and spinach along with garlic and ginger and onions and a little some fresh tomatoes and fresh chilies and of course paneer which is the Indian cheese. Pollock paneer on the other hand is usually just pure spinach and that can be a little bit overwhelming so I like to cut it with a little bit of broccoli. These are the ingredients we're going to be using in our sag paneer today. We're going to start with three cups of spinach, two cups of broccoli, about a cup of fresh cilantro, about a cup and a half of these wonderful Campari tomatoes, and then our base, which is gonna give the sag paneer a lot of flavor, is garlic and ginger and onions, and we're gonna use almost a whole bulb of garlic, a good amount of ginger, one large onion, and then to spice it, we're gonna use a couple of serrano chilies. Once the sag is prepared, we're gonna add the paneer to it and fold it in. We're gonna cook the paneer a little bit separately and then we're gonna cook it all, add all of it together in a little bit of ghee, which is clarified butter. The crown jewel of the sag paneer is the paneer, of course, which is Indian cheese. Paneer can be found in any Indian grocery store or some people choose to make it at home even and I'm sure you could find a recipe for that. The difference in our sag paneer is that I like to bake it instead of frying it. Um, baking it uses a lot less oil, it's got a lot less fat, and it gives it a lighter flavor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a one pound block of paneer, cut it into about half inch cubes, and then place it in a casserole dish with some olive oil and bake it for 12 minutes. It's going to help it maintain its shape when we finally fold it into the spinach and broccoli mixture. We're gonna prepare the paneer so that it's ready to go once the sog is ready. And we're gonna bake it in a little bit of olive oil. And I like to bake it instead of frying it because it uses considerably less oil and it keeps it nice and juicy and moist so that when you finally add it to the sog, it's not dried out and, and chewy. It'll be nice and moist and juicy. So we're just gonna add it there like that and we're gonna coat the paneer a little bit in oil so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And we're only gonna bake it for about 10 to 12 minutes. We don't wanna redden it, we don't wanna do much, we just wanna firm it up a little bit. So the paneer is coated and now it's ready for the oven. We're taking the paneer out right away because it tends to stick to the baking dish if you let it cool in there. So 
So we've prepared our spinach and broccoli. We've boiled it for about a half hour, and as you can see, it's all broken down and really soft and tender and ready to be blended with an immersion blender to become nice and creamy. Separately, we've been sauteing for the last 45 minutes our garlic and ginger and onions and hot chilies and tomatoes. They've all cooked down, and we're also going to blend these separately, and then we're going to put them on the stove and saute them with spices and a little bit of ghee before we add them to the sog. The reason that we cooked our garlic and ginger and onions and tomatoes separately from our spinach and broccoli is because the spinach and broccoli has a lot of water in it and we don't want the water to dilute the aroma and the flavor of our spices. The ingredients for our samosas are going to be of course the dough. We've made it with some shortening and flour. And the full recipe can be found on dinneratyourhouse.com. And the filling, that's what really makes it delicious. The filling is made with potatoes which we've boiled and then we've peeled the boiled potatoes and chopped them very fine into tiny little squares that we are gonna saute on the stove with some fresh chili, some fresh ginger, cilantro, spices, and then we're gonna add these sweet sugar snap peas. It's very simple. We're just gonna saute them a little bit in a little bit of peanut oil and then let them cool and that's gonna be our filling for our samosas. So we're using a little bit of peanut oil and we're gonna, the first thing we're gonna add are some cumin seeds. Just a little bit, about half a teaspoon, then a little bit of turmeric, and then a little bit of coriander. This is what's gonna make the spice. We're gonna also add some salt and just a tash of red pepper. Not too much because we're using fresh green chilies. Now we're gonna add the chili, the ginger and the chili. Toast that a little bit. So now that our ginger and chili is uh, nicely cooked down, we're going to add our peas and saute those for a little second, and then add our potatoes. Since the potatoes are already cooked. It's not like we're really cooking them again, we're just coating them in the roasted spices. That's what's gonna give the samosas a really nice earthy flavor. While Sunana is working her magic in the kitchen, let's sit down with Rosie and talk about her amazing house. So Rosie, thanks again for having us over today. Uh, we're really looking forward to a great meal, some great music. But your house is amazing. You've got a tree growing in your living room. Yeah. So the house was built by a woman who was an artist? Yeah, so um, a lady built it in the late 70s and she was an artist and she was a dancer and she was kind of an amateur ecologist. And so I guess she built this um, this sort of terrarium, atrium section as a kind of a, as her work, of, her, as her main work of art really. When we first came to see the house, um, all the plants had died and so um, when they were selling the house, they filled all the garden with these um, fake plants. So it was sort of this jungle of, of, of kind of fake palm trees, um, which embarrassingly I was a, I was kind of fooled by for quite a long time. Anyway, um, <laughs> so a plant expert. Yeah, <laughs> nothing about well, that. So <laughs> eventually, you figured it out, and then you replanted all kinds of new stuff. Yeah, so I took all the fake plants away, and I kind of landscaped all of these beds, and and I. Planted all these little plants that are coming through now. Yeah, it looks lovely now. All kinds of things are coming up. I planted a herb garden over there, which has all basil and oregano and uh, thyme and a whole lot of other herbs, rocket. And so the idea is we just go and, and harvest things from there and put them in our, in our salads, etc. Great. She wanted us to sell the, 
the house to somebody who would, would take care of the terrarium and so not just... Someone would appreciate this amazing creation that her mother had Yeah, built. somebody who wouldn't cut the tree down and right. regrow all these and, plants. And pave it over. Yeah, yeah, that would be sad. So, so she must have been thrilled when you showed up. She, was, she seemed quite happy, so that was nice. It was, it was a good thing. <laughs> good. But she had birds and she had like 22 cats and she had a, a whole load of things living in here. I'm not sure I could tolerate quite that many things living in my house, but we'll see. Maybe I'll go crazy. <laughs> so do you have any other plans to dramatically alter the house or is there anything else you'd like to do to the house to make it more unique than it already is? Oh, so Ben wants to flood the basement and turn it into a swimming pool because he's a swimmer. <laughs> 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 How did you originally meet Dexter, who's going to play today? Um, so, uh, when I went to Brazil um, to work in the Amazon, I um, got kind of into Brazilian music a bit, and so when I came to Boulder, um, Dexter and I were both in a samba percussion group called Bateria Alegria, um, who play quite a lot in Boulder. Um, so uh, we were the bell. In English, that means drums. It means drums of joy. Drums of joy. Um, like and fun. so we, uh, we parade down Hill Street. Make, that's the main street in Boulder. Um, sort of drumming up some carnival spirit, which works actually. Um, right. So Dexter and I were the, were the bell section of the, the bateria for a while, and he was my neighbour in my previous house. Um, Good. But he's a significantly more accomplished musician than I. <laughs> Oh, he's a wonderful player, for sure. <laughs> We're thrilled that he wanted to come today and play. It should be great. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, we'll have the, the music from his clarinet blending with the music from your little fountain here. Mmm, mmm. Oh, so, are there any other uh, interesting highlights of your garden here that you'd like to point out? Uh, or the house So, this is general? the grass here. Our cat um, escapes and he doesn't run away, he just goes and eats grass in the, uh, in the driveway, so we thought we'd bring some grass inside for him to eat. He can't go outside because there's mountain lions and bears and foxes, so he's not pop he's, he isn't the top of the food chain in this, uh, this part of the woods. Um, uh, so that's, that's from Free's Grass. And this is a, a grapevine that I'm hoping will grow into a, a beautiful sort of um, screen. Um, Wonderful. There's some shamrock over there that I'm hoping will grow around the, the paving slabs. Um, I kind of was kind of inspired by a trip that I make to San Francisco every December um, for a conference. And I always see this plant in the middle of winter and it cheers me up a great deal. So I'm hoping to recreate that in my house. Yeah, yeah. it's wonderful. I have some cherry trees and a lilac, which I'm excited by. Oh, yeah. um, which one is the lilac? It's in that bed there. I see. I um, love lilacs. Yeah. When I first moved to America, I moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I had a huge lilac tree in my, in my garden in the, the first month I was there, so that was like a happy time in my life. So. Good. Who doesn't love lilacs? Yeah. So you're English, obviously. Uh, how long have you been in America? Uh, for four and a half years. And what brought you here originally? Well, I originally moved to New Mexico um, to work on trying to figure out why um, all the pinyon trees died there during a big drought they had in the early 2000s. So I worked at Los Alamos National Laboratory, um, which as well as being a nuclear lab, has a big ecology section, which is a little known fact. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, so I lived in Santa Fe and I, I worked in Los Alamos for like nearly two years. Well, I'm glad to hear they're not just building bombs there. No, no, they do many, they do many good things. Not good. Really more energy and nuclear. Build, building better nuclear reactors and kind of fundamental physics and kinds of great science. Good. What are your favorite things about America? Um, I like I like the space out here in the West in the mountains, um, and I like uh, I like how how friendly and uncynical people are in the states. Um, and I like the weather a great deal. Obviously, it's quite nice and sunny here in Boulder. We have 300 days of sunshine a year, and, and the, the weather is very extreme. It's much more extreme than in England. In England, it's kind of temperate, and don't we have weather of any great uh, intensity, whereas here we have storms and a three foot of snow and 
wild mm -hmm. temperature changes. Huge fires and 105 degree temperatures, and then we have minus 22 Celsius in the middle of winter. And um, yeah, so I like I like the fact that the weather is kind of really intense. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's perfect for your line of work. Yeah, You're and in the right place. Ben and I do sort of cycling and skiing and trail running and kind of all the stereotypes in that way. So yeah, that's really great. Like that's why I'll, for all the reasons <laughs> I came here too. <laughs> So today we're going to be making some fresh tandoori chicken. It's one of the most popular dishes on any Indian restaurant's menu. People make it in the summer, the winter. It's very easy. And today we're going to be making tandoori chicken with boneless breast of chicken. Um, usually it's made with legs and thighs, but I find boneless breast of chicken to be a little bit easier. So that's what we're going to be using. Right. We're going to be marinating it for several hours in a combination that actually makes it the tandoori. It's a combination of yogurt, uh, fresh lemon juice, grated ginger, two kinds of tandoori powder, and of course, lots of Indian spices that we're gonna roast. And then I like to put a little bit of sour cream in it, just so that the spices stick to the chicken a little bit better. Sure. Uh, do you guys like tandoori chicken? Yeah, but I've never had tandoori chicken that's made sort of at home, so I'm, I'm quite excited to oh, figure out how that works. You're going to be surprised. It's so easy, mm. uh, especially how we're going to cook it on your grill. It's very fast, and, and it's going to be a great accompaniment to the rest of the meal. Have you had it before, Ben? Yeah, I, I love it. It's, yeah. uh, it. It was always more exciting to have something which was sizzling. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm not going to be bringing it out to you on a sizzling platter, <laughs> but it, it, I'm going to tell you the, the flavor is going to match anything that you've had in England before. Cool. So our tandoori chicken has been marinating for several hours now, and you can see it's got this beautiful, creamy, pink color to it. Right. This is what's going to give it that really nice red hue when we put it on the grill. So is it ready to go now? Well, it is ready to go. We're going to be putting it on shortly. You know, the longer it marinades, the more flavor the chicken gets. The, okay. the citrus really helps the salt get into the chicken and the rest of the flavors just follow suit. So it's pretty much ready. We're going to be putting it on in just a minute. So How long is too long? Well, I mean, I'd like to marinate for at least three hours. Right. I mean, some people marinate overnight. I don't really necessarily like to do that because it just gets a little bit, a little too much salt into the chicken. Right. So I, I think three or four hours is a good amount of time to marinate. Cool. Does a different cut of chicken need more marinating if it was legs? I think so. I mean, we took our breasts and we cut them into fours so that they're easily nice, you know, like serving sizes. So people will probably take one or two. That's why it doesn't have to take so much longer because, right. you know, we're not marinating a, a whole breast. Sure. And what's the red color? The red color is a combination of paprika and cayenne pepper and a little bit of, uh, you know, I think turmeric mm -hmm. that gives it that bright color, makes it orangey. It smells lovely. Yeah, yeah, it should. We have a lot of fresh ginger and a little bit of fresh chili in it. How important is it to get the absolute ratios right? Um, well, I mean, I'm not one to measure. Right. I just, you know, I saw my mom do it. She'd put a spoon of this and a spoon of that. and. It really, I know it's right when I see the color. Like, that's the right color. If it was too red, it's too much. If it's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, not quite red enough or not pink, then I need a little bit more. Sure. So it's a real visual thing. Yeah. So we're going to be making some samosas today, but first of all, I wanted to introduce Arabella, who's going to be helping us. Arabella is a fourth grader, a rising fourth grader in Boulder County Schools. Arabella, have you ever made samosas before? No. Do you like them? Okay, good. So we've got our filling ready and we're about to fill the samosa dough, which we have here. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to put our finger in this mixture of flour and water and just create a little bit of a seal. Do you want to go ahead and do that? Probably might as well. Yeah. <clears throat> and you only put it on halfway because we're going to use this to make a cone that makes the body of the samosa, just okay. like that. Like that? Yeah, exactly. So now put it together like this. And do you make these overlap like yeah, that? Yeah, you make it overlap. Right. Exactly, perfect. And then you squish them together. Right. So this one, oh. are you a lefty? Mm. I think you are. <laughs> okay, so see how we just joined it together there? Now you've got a cone. Can you squeeze the seam there? Mm-hmm because you need the seam to be nice and tight so that we could fill it 
with this lovely filling that we made. And we're just gonna kind of spoon it in there. So what's in the filling? So the filling is a combination of potatoes and peas and cumin seeds, um, all sort of sauteed in a little bit of peanut oil. Now the, the easiest thing to do is hold it in your hand like this, otherwise it'll fall out. I'll fill mine. Yeah. So let me get this for you. Hold it in your hand, just one hand. See how I'm holding it like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go, perfect. And now we're gonna seal it. And the way we seal it is we're gonna take a little bit more of the flour and water and put it on one side. And then we're just gonna smash it together, mm -hmm. just like that. And there's our perfect little pocket. Oh, yours is very pretty. Well, I've had a little bit of practice, <laughs> but you know, once you do a couple of them, you get the hang of it. So like this. Exactly. And squish it down. Yeah, you squish it down. And then the next thing you want to do is just fold it over after you squish it down so it doesn't like open. That. Oh, it's so cute. It's a perfect little samosa. Wow. So good what are the job. Seed, what are these seeds in the dough? Those are caraway seeds. Right. Yeah, I, I, you know, not everybody puts those in, but we're Punjabis. I'm from, you know, the Punjab region right. of India, and Punjabis like to put caraway seeds in. In everything. Perfect. It's about, it sometimes seems like the lady who lived here is kind of still slightly here. Um. <laughs> is that a good feeling or an unsettling feeling? Mostly a good feeling. Yeah. I think she'd approve. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think she would too, based on what I've. What I'm a scientist, of course, it. not that I believe in any of that kind of thing. No. <laughs> we, often, uh, often, we often wonder what she meant by different things, don't we? Yeah. What, she what do you mean? To. Give me an well, example. Well, what, what she because she designed the house, so we often wonder, like, you know, what what particular rooms were for and what kind of effect she was trying to make with the garden and the trees and she was yeah. very keen on 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 um, unadulterated nature so she didn't want to manage the forest at all in a natural way and she she wanted kind of nature to be inside where she was and so she didn't have to ever leave the sort of natural world when she went into her house and i think she was quite um she was quite intense about that mm. yeah the plants have been planted as a sort of ecological competition experiment. Um, you mean the things that you've planted? Yeah, mostly. Yeah, yeah. we'd want to see which ones um, win the competition. Mostly. <laughs> it's basically a fight between the different plants. <laughs> <laughs> which ones are you rooting for? <laughs> I don't mind. It's just, it's just an experiment. <laughs> I just want to see what happens. I don't make long-term plans. No. I don't, know how to, I don't know how anyone can make long-term plans, really. Like... Life just kind of crazy things happen all the time, and if you make if you make plans, then you won't get to take the opportunities that arise, like having a house with a tree inside. Yeah. How could you plan that? <laughs> I could. I didn't plan that. <laughs> and yet here you are. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even plan to come to America. No. Uh, both happened. of our lives to date have just been really going with the flow. Well, it sounds like uh, the band's getting ready it to does. play. I hear some instruments in there, so let's go on They're in all set up. and yeah. hear some music. Cool. Yeah, of our friends. So, Dexter, it's great to have you here at Rosie's house. We're really excited to hear you play today. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your musical background? What got you into the style of music that you play? I knew from the time I was five that I wanted to play clarinet. So Because you liked the sound of that instrument in particular, or you liked the style of music that you associated with? Or? I think it was the sound of the instrument. Mm -hmm. That's a great sound. Um, but you yeah, also play saxophones. I do. I do. Um, I but, grew up and got interested in all kinds of music. Um, but I started in third grade on the clarinet and uh, you sort, sort of never looked back. I ended up being really interested in some oddball music, but uh, my main focus has been Brazilian stuff. So why don't you tell us about the guys that are going to play with you today, Dexter? Well, we have a quintet and I'm really lucky to be playing with every one of these guys. They're exceptional musicians. Um, Bill Copper I've been playing with for a while as a guitarist and really the preeminent Brazilian and maybe any other style guitarist in the, in the front range. Um, and he and I sort of came together over this particular style of music and, uh, and also sort of shared experience. I traveled in, in Latin America and got immersed in it and Bill spent a lot of time, uh, I think a year or more, 
in Madrid playing Brazilian music. Great. And uh, while he was there, um, he met a great uh, pianist from Venezuela, whose name is Victor Mestas Perez, who's with us today as well. Excellent. Um, and so we're really tickled to have Victor here. He's an exceptional pianist and a great guy. And then we have um, Dave Willey, who's on a Dave Willey on accordion is um, an amazing musician, a composer, and uh, uh, leader of his own band, and 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 produces music for some really eclectic kinds of stuff. And uh, Dave and I play in a couple of bands together, and it's really a treat to have him doing this Brazilian thing. Um, he brings his own flavor to it. And Raul Rossiter on drums is uh, definitely the top Brazilian drummer in, in this area. And he's just, Raul is a very astute guy and has the great feel for the stuff. He's also a good singer, but we're not going to sing today. Well, good. It sounds like a great group of people, and uh, we're very excited to hear you play. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. It's always fun when these guys get together. Good. Well, thanks for bringing them all. And, uh, yeah, Thank it's you. Gonna, it's going to sound great.
wanted to thank everybody here, um, Rosie and Ben, for having us. It's been a wonderful day cooking this beautiful meal. And thank you, Dexter, and your band for all of the lovely music. I hope you guys all enjoy what we made together. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Yeah. You can cook for us any time. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, so it doesn't come back. Okay. Do you want to try this? Later? Pretty much gone. Okay, it's covered. Very good. Okay, all right. But you need to try this. Thank goodness. Looks like we're uh, samosa. One samosa short. Are we short of samosa? Oh, we are. We got more. more. Oh, there's more. Okay. I'm gonna get a quick thing on Give me the plate. Like a round spicy. More what? Samosa. Is that spicy? Oh. No. Not bad. Is that chicken? Yeah, chicken. Nice. Well, can you give it? I just lost. No. 